The Path to Authenticity is brought to you by GIA Miami. Founded by world-class mental health experts, GIA provides advanced care for difficult-to-treat conditions, including anxiety, medication-resistant depression, and obsessive-compulsive disorder. Using state-of-the-art methods, GIA can help people recover from conditions when more traditional approaches can't. Dr. Antonello Bonchi has assembled an expert team serving international clientele in a modern and resplendent Miami setting. If you or someone you love is suffering from depression, anxiety, OCD, or other mental health concerns, call GIA at 833-713-0828. You can learn more about GIA by clicking the link in the show notes or by visiting GIAMiami.com. Thank you for listening to The Path to Authenticity. My name's Tom Gentry. I think of this show as the opposite of small talk. You'll hear real conversations with real people who know who they are. We talk about what makes them who they are, how they became who they are, and how we might become truer expressions of who we are. your first time here thanks for checking it out if not thanks for coming back i'm tom gentry and this is the path to authenticity episode 212 for february 21st 2023 happens to be my 50th birthday And as I've been telling you guys, if you've listened leading up to this episode, this is the final episode of season one of the podcast. I'm going to take a little break from this, from the path to authenticity, and launch a season two in May of 2023. So I'm going to take a couple months. And in the meantime, I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing, which is publishing a couple pieces on Substack every week. If you haven't yet subscribed to my newsletter, The Manifest, please do. I'll leave a link in the show notes. So that's on Substack. and. Something new I'm going to be doing very shortly here in the next few weeks is launching an all-new podcast exclusive to Substack. I'm going to call it The Podcast or The Tom Gentry Podcast. What I've really wanted is to have a little more flexibility than this particular podcast has offered me. You know, I came up with a format that really works and I'm happy with it. But as you know, if you followed me, I have a lot of different things that I like to talk about. If you've been around any of my rooms on Clubhouse or if you've listened to any of the other podcasts, sort of the spinoff to the Path to Authenticity, which I called 20 Questions. Men Who Talk with my buddy Ed Tilton. I want to be able to have any of these types of conversations and have them fit. So a more sort of general podcast that's exclusive to Substack is what I've opted to create. And subscribers will have access to that. At some point, it's going to be behind a paywall, probably pretty early on. 
And then when I interview people for the path to authenticity or for 20 questions or I have conversations with Ed for men who talk or I just want to have conversations with a friend of mine about what it's like to be a man who's trying to heal whatever, I'll release it first on Substack and then release it later on either Men Who Talk or The Path to Authenticity, whichever. So it enables me to reuse the content, which is something I've been trying to do more and more. So if you subscribe on Substack, you'll get to hear it first. Also have the podcast archive on Patreon, which you can access for $4 a month. There's a founder's tier, which the first 150 patrons can get for $5 a month. After that, it'll go up to $8 a month. And those folks will have access to everything I release on Patreon. Unedited interviews, early access to episodes whenever possible, and not to mention the earliest episodes that I did, you know, from episode one. It's wild to me that this is episode 212. So... You know, the big reason why I wanted to take a break from this podcast was to be able to focus on this manuscript that I've been working on. And if you're reading what I'm publishing on Substack, you're getting bits and pieces of it. But basically, I'm writing a book about men and our relationships with our emotions and how fractured as a society, our relationship with emotions is and how problematic that is. I just saw a clip online today where it was on Instagram from the manosphere where this guy was saying, you know, men say they don't have feelings and that's that It's feminists who are propagating this narrative and it's not true. Men don't say they don't have feelings and blah, 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 making it all about the feminists. But the truth is, it's implicit. When you're a male in this culture, whether or not we say we have emotions, whether or not Others tell us we have emotions. We think we're not supposed to. We're taught to avoid experiencing our emotions. And we're taught to believe that there's something wrong with us if we are emotional. Anyway, it's really easy for me to get carried away on this stuff. So yeah, I'm putting together a manuscript, which I'm going to be submitting to publishers, you know, the first one I've chosen. So I'm just in the beginning stages of the book proposal for this particular publisher, which I think is who I'd like to start with. Anyway, so... Stay tuned on Substack for that. Of course, I'll be talking more and more about it as time goes on. I'll be sharing more about it. So those are the ways to keep up with me between now and then. Now, for this new podcast I'm doing, I chose some theme music which I'm going to play now before reading the piece I wrote and released on Substack last week pertaining to turning 50. Oh, 
fifties doorstep. Somewhere between the lump in my throat and the pit in my stomach. I can't believe I'm saying this. I turn 50 years old next week. A few days ago, thinking about that statement, I recalled something a professor of mine once said. Poetry is condensed language. He was referring to the way a group of words can mean so much figuratively in addition to what they mean literally. The words convey sentiment and evoke emotion far greater than the sum of their parts. One of my favorite expressions of this concept is the song Outfit, written by Jason Isbell. Rooted in the reality of Isbell's family life, he wrote it from his father's point of view. With the lyrics, his dad, who painted houses to support his young family, imparts bits of life wisdom to his son. The song culminates in these lines. So don't let them take who you are, boy, and don't try to be who you ain't, and don't let me catch you in Kindale with a bucket of wealthy man's paint. None of us need even a moment to imagine everything the narrator says without saying it here. We know. Especially if you're a parent like me, you know. As I ponder my upcoming birthday, I realize I may never string together five words with more layers of meaning than these. I'm about to turn 50. I suppose the first layer to peel away is my uneasiness as I approach this milestone. I wouldn't call it a complete neurotic tailspin, but it resembles one. I feel it, not quite a lump in my throat or a pit in my stomach. It's a type of anxiety with elements of both, and it radiates from between these two places, my head and my gut. As the day approaches, so many thoughts circulate through my mind when I allow it, over and over again. I'm getting old. I don't feel old. Well, my body feels kind of old, but otherwise I feel young. Not young, but just the right age. Life is just getting good. I may only have another 30 years, if that. I'm just beginning to enjoy this. I'm just getting good at this. There are so many things I still want to do, things I want to accomplish. I should have accomplished more by now. I need to get my ass in gear. I'm starting to look old. I don't want to look old. And on and on and on. That's only some of the language condensed within the words when I say, I'm about to turn 50. I can't even tell you how many layers of meaning are there. Far more than I have a birthday coming up. That's a sentence. I'm about to turn 50 is poetry. I want it to be an epic poem. That's why I've found myself riddled with thoughts, reviewing the story of my life after half a century. It's because I love my life and I want more. It has been an odyssey of sorts, my life. Because here's another line in an earlier stanza at the end of book one. There was a time when I didn't want to live anymore. Book one was the Iliad. Only there was no Helen in this story, no Paris or Hector. I was at war with myself. But like Odysseus, I traveled far from home to fight in a long war, and I encountered my share of monsters over the many years it took me to get back. Another line of verse I will share comes just before the place in the poem that reads, I'm about to turn 50. Two words. I'm home. I am home. Figuratively, I've been home for a long time. Literally, I've been here since March. When I set up the wireless network, I named it Ithaca. I am home. But also, if only geographically, I'm much further from my son than I ever wanted to be. 
I never thought home would feel like this. Not at 25, and definitely not at 50. Like the narrator of the Isbel song, I've painted my share of houses. Like the narrator, my son sings. And like the songwriter, the way my son's story is unfolding, I doubt he'll ever step foot in a place like Kendale. The first draft of this story ended about here. But as much as I would like to enclose the words I'm about to turn 50 in a shiny package with a nice little bow, that wouldn't be honest. It feels so much messier. Yes, I found my way home. Yes, I brought a son into the world, and he's poised to have a better life than his father's. Yes, I'm reasonably happy, but those aren't the ideas condensed in the language pertaining to my 50th birthday. The inner dialogue I mentioned before is part of it. Given the opportunity, I would do some things differently. I do have a couple of regrets. Vanity plays a role. Blah, blah, blah. But something heavier accelerates my thoughts and motivates me to keep battling my inner demons. There are ten words attributed to another man, but from a quiet voice within, I've repeated them to myself for as long as I can remember. As the years go by, the voice gets louder and louder. Now, as I approach this birthday, they drown out everything else. As I tell you I'm turning 50, it's the only thing I hear, and that thing is what I've been feeling in my chest. You're not everything you could be, and you know it. So, that's it. Going forward, these readings can only be heard on the Substack podcast or the podcast. I just have to go back to saying this, that this podcast means so much to me. It's changed my life. It's made me more who I am. It's helped me learn how to love myself in ways that I never did before. It's helped me connect with myself. It's been my path to authenticity. And I hope at least some of you can say the same, that it's helped you Become more who you are. That was always the purpose of this. So, until season two, you can find me on Substack. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for supporting me and supporting the show. I'll be back soon. Be nice. That's our story. I hope you enjoyed the punk rock opera. We have one last piece of music for you. It goes like this.
you cannot make us We are the shit Thank you. Good night.